It's no surprise that the cost and choices of food that you buy at the supermarket are a direct result of American agriculture being the most productive in the world. And farming today owes a debt of gratitude to early American farmers. Where? We'll start in Virginia, where archaeologists are making new discoveries about George Washington, the farmer. Tell you what, I just get hungry when I walk around this garden. Just set Dean Norton loose in George Washington's garden and watch his enthusiasm spring from the soil. Then some red cabbage, can't wait for that. I love, I love red cabbage, that's just wonderful. Got some new seeds coming up here. And once it's harvested, a new crop comes right back in afterwards. Dean is the director of horticulture at Mount Vernon, George Washington's home and plantation outside Alexandria, Virginia. Here, our first president grew tobacco, corn, and wheat on five farms scattered across his estate. Dean figures he's the 37th caretaker of Washington's kitchen garden, a proud lineage stretching back to the 1750s. What you see here is not just reflective of Washington's time, but it's reflective of a person or a master of a plantation that did not have the space to just have a pure pleasure garden. He had to combine necessity with beauty. Necessity meant George and Martha Washington wanted a bounty of fresh vegetables from spring through fall. But letters from that era also suggest something else was needed. Washington, after the Revolutionary War, was, was honored, was admired, was worshipped, and he knew that he was going to have guests from all around the world visiting uh, on a weekly, daily basis. And so he needed to change his garden that reflected the man that he had become. And so he needed a flower garden. The gradual replacement of veggies with flowers continued into the 1980s. By then, almost the entire garden bloomed with beauty, but nothing to eat. Then archaeologists took a closer look at diaries and documents from Washington and his workers. The gardeners are spending much more time cultivating vegetables than they are flowers. So we know without a doubt that they were here. We used to have 2,000 square feet of vegetables. Now we're cultivating 10,000 square feet of vegetables, which is much more the sort of equation that Washington would have wanted. To go from something that was totally wrong historically to something that we think is so totally right is incredibly exciting. When you visit Mount Vernon, or Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, you see the legacy of love for the land shared by these two founding fathers. Both believed agriculture to be the noblest of professions and crucial to the future of the republic. They were also innovators, practicing crop rotation to preserve the soil, experimenting with new breeds of crops and farm animals. And both believed the best farm tools were the ones you made yourself. Nicholas Kimball is an apprentice blacksmith at Mount Vernon, following the path of craftsmen dating back to 1755. By uh, taking a look at the crops that are being grown here, we can look uh, at historic precedents to the tools that would have been used in that industry. Some things that you would have found made here, so this is a, uh, a style of hoe right here. We've also got a, uh, an axe right here. This is a manure rake. And you'll see it's a very uh, unique design. It's kind of like a cross between a pitchfork and a rake. But American innovation and invention date well before Washington's day. You'll also find it here at Colonial Williamsburg. Established in 1699, this one-time capital of the Virginia Commonwealth was preserved for the future by a fortunate quirk of history. Well, in a sense, uh, we can thank Thomas Jefferson for that, because when he moved the government of Virginia to Richmond in 1780, this town went to sleep pretty much for 150 years. Today, thousands of visitors watch reenactments of historic moments leading up to the American Revolution. Williamsburg has realistic examples of 18th century farm life, demonstrated by folks who actually live here and keep everything authentic. Milling lumber, raising livestock, tending to 80 acres of gardens. And uh, I can cultivate, which is getting the weeds out. And you have to win the war on weeds. Historic farmer Ed Schultz and his horse Lancer 
are turning the soil between rows of corn and tobacco. We call it a hoe plow, and I'm here to tell you I've used it many, many miles, and it works great. But the horse works great, too. Visiting these historic places offers more than just a glimpse into the past. It returns us to the agricultural roots shared by many Americans. And perhaps we come away with a greater appreciation for this most essential industry. Jefferson said that 95% of Americans were farmers at his time. That's how important agriculture was. And the same things that were important then are important now. What we're trying to do is create better citizens for the future by helping them understand the past and how that applies to their lives now. It makes you a more complete human being to know where your food comes from. And that's why I'm here, to help them see that. By creating these items, by doing this work, we're not only taking a look at the past, we're taking a look at where we're going. Again, it's just even more of an honor to know how special the land, agriculture, cultivation of the earth was to the founding fathers, because that's my profession, and, and I love it too.